welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here welcome to my formal living room i wanted to do this juicy q a in a different location we talked about doing it outside but it, the lighting just wasn't doing it for me today and it's really hard for me to haul out all of my equipment ring lights tripods so i decided to go ahead and film in my formal living room which i've never done so welcome this is a juicy q a my inspiration for this video came from justin's journey here on youtube i will go ahead and link her channel down below so my questions today are considered juicy. I asked you guys on both my Instagram and my Facebook group to ask me juicy Q&A related questions. Now I got just some basic questions. I got some questions about myself, my husband, things that I like to do, YouTube, all sorts of questions. So I'm going to share the answers to all of those with you today. And I have a lot of questions. So I'm going to do my best to get through these as quickly as possible. So let's jump in to this juicy Q&A. are in no particular order and again you guys did vote over on Instagram to have me answer these questions just answer them versus doing a get ready with me it was a very close close race with only two votes separating between a get ready with me and just sitting down and answering these questions so I threw on the bright red lipstick today to answer all of your juicy questions the first question was how old am I so I am 44 years old I will be 45 here in November what was the worst thing that I got in trouble for as a teen? To be completely honest with you, I was actually a very good child. I never really did anything to get into trouble. I've never been arrested or in trouble really at all. Now, I would say that the worst thing I did as a teenager was I made a terrible boyfriend choice when I was about a sophomore, junior in high school. My parents hated him for good reason, mind you. And that was probably the worst thing that I did is continue to date that person until honestly, he went to jail. I know. So my parents were right. That ended that relationship. But honestly, that was probably the worst thing that I did as a teenager. Next is what is my favorite type of music. Now, I like most types of music with the exception of really, really heavy metal, which is what my husband likes. So we do not agree on music types at all. I prefer 90s pop. I like country. I R and B. I pretty much like just about everything, but honestly, I don't listen to a lot of music. I do watch YouTube or listen to YouTube in my car. And then my workout consists of jazzercise, which they bring the music to the party. So I would say that I'm not really into music, but if I do listen to it, I pretty much will listen to anything other than what my husband likes. Next is, do you drink alcohol? And if so, how often do you drink? And do you have one drink or multiple drinks? So I am not a big drinker, to be honest with you. I do like beer, but I enjoy craft beer. I would rather spend my calories on food than on drinks. So I'm really not a big drinker. If I do have an alcoholic beverage, it's generally just one because I'm a total lightweight when it comes to alcohol. So I'll generally have a beer or a glass of wine or maybe a spiked seltzer water, but I'm definitely not a drinker. I'm not a partier. I really never have been. I'm pretty boring, pretty straight and narrow. So I don't really drink a lot. And when I do, it's generally just one beverage and I just work that into my day. So the next question is, what was your upbringing when it came to healthy eating and exercise? And did that have an impact on you as an adult? So to be completely honest with you, growing up, we, I was an only child. So it was me, my mom and my dad. And we had a family dinner every night where we sat down at the table. We talked about our day. My parents asked me questions about school and how I was doing. I feel like as a child, my diet was very well-rounded. We did the meat, the potato, the vegetable. We didn't do a lot of processed foods. Having macaroni and cheese as a kid was a big treat for me. I did have desserts here and there, but what I remember growing up is having family dinners and having it be a satisfying, well-rounded meal. However, I have been overweight most of my life. There was a very small amount of time as a young child that I was average weight, but starting in about middle school up to adulthood, I've pretty much struggled with my weight. I've been on and off of diets, 
everything from Atkins, low carb, Weight Watchers, you name it, I've pretty much tried it. So I have struggled with my weight my whole life and obviously struggled with my food choices as a young adult and into adulthood. The next question is, in what part of the country do you live? I am not a stalker, so that's pretty funny. I actually live in Washington State, not Washington DC, but Washington State. Next is as a realtor, are you paid or commission only? It sounds like a really fun job. So yes, it is a fun job. It's a lot of work. You have to be very patient with people because people will try your patience, but we are commission only only it does cost a substantial amount to get started as a realtor and also to maintain your license throughout the year is about fifteen hundred dollars in my area so i am only paid when i close on a house whether that be a buyer or a seller so we don't get paid for our time until the actual deal is at the closing table and sometimes they fall through sometimes we invest a lot of time into someone and it doesn't work out it's just a risk of being in a commission only business but i truly love it i love helping people find their first home. I just love being part of the real estate world. Next is, does your husband support you vlogging and the time you put into YouTube? Absolutely, he does. He knows how important you guys are to me, how important my YouTube channel is to me. He doesn't necessarily want to be in the videos. As you know, you don't see him make an appearance very often, but he absolutely supports me. He knows that I film recipes, so he'll make sure that he goes out to the garage or stays quiet so that I can film the recipes. Yes, he's absolutely 100% supportive. He, like myself, is ready for me to make YouTube my full-time job. So he is supportive and asking whatever we can do to make that happen. So yes, I'm very, very grateful that he supports me. The next question is, what do you say when someone says to you, you can have a little bit of cake, it's not gonna hurt you. So I don't really have that issue or that sabotage in my life. People around me are generally supportive. Most of my friends are also on a healthy lifestyle journey. So so we kind of feed off of each other and support each other. My mom uh, definitely supports me 100%. She asks me how I'm doing. She notices my weight loss. She knows that I am pretty strong-willed. So if I make my mind up to do something, I do it. And if I make my mind up to lose weight, no matter what you say, it's not going to affect me. I will just make sure that I surround myself with people who are positive and supportive. And in the event that I'm in a situation where someone is trying to peer pressure me into doing something, I just let them know that I'm not hungry, I'm full, I don't like it. I'll make up some reason why even having that little bit of cake is not going to be something that I'm going to do. The next question is, why did you transition to Whole Foods on WW? So I did an entire video titled, I Need a Change. I'm going to go ahead and link that down below for you guys, where I talked all about why I made the decision to switch to Whole Foods. So it's quite an extensive process that I went through, so I'm not going to go through that here, but definitely check out that video. The next question is, what is the most positive side effect of losing 41 pounds? Oh my gosh, you guys, there's so many. But what I would say is the most noticeable side effect for me is my endurance and my physical capability. So for example, going to Jazzercise, it is so much easier for me to do the classes to do all of the moves, to make it through the entire song and not wanna die. So I've definitely noticed that my endurance and just my physical capabilities in general have been so much better. I'm less winded, I'm less tired. It's definitely less hard for me to do a lot of my day-to-day -day activities and that is so incredibly important to me. That is a piece of the health journey that I'm so incredibly grateful for, for my weight loss so far. This person also asked, do I feel like Jordan's science inner circle is worth the money. So to be completely honest with you, he gave me a free month into his inner circle and I have not utilized that at all. I do read the posts in his private Facebook group, but as far as the inner circle goes, I haven't utilized it. So for me, it's not something that I would pay to continue. But if you feel like you need the guidance and you need the support, I would highly recommend at least checking it out for a month. But for me, I will not be continuing after the month that Jordan gave me. The next question I actually received several times and that was how did me and my husband meet? So Troy and I actually went to high school together, but he is two years older than me. So I did not know him in high school. When we started dating, he showed me his yearbook, his senior picture, and I thought, 
oh, I recognize him. So I recognized his face, but I did not know him. We'd never spoke in high school. We did not run in the same circles, obviously because I was younger than him. And he actually had the same girlfriend all through high school. So when we met, we actually met online through match.com. And both of us had been on match for a while. I had been on several dates that weren't successful. Just didn't really like them. My husband, Troy, same thing, went on several dates didn't connect with anybody. He has actually some pretty crazy dating stories. So we got together at a local restaurant. We played bingo because it was bingo night at the restaurant. I think we just had a beer and we just got to know each other and that's where it started. We actually dated for about nine months before we purchased our first home together. So we lived separately for the first nine months of our relationship. He had his apartment. I had my little house that I rented and then we decided to take the plunge and move in together and buy a home and that was the very very first home that we purchased together. The house we live in now is our second home together. So we dated for about two years before we got married. We have both been married before, so we just did a quick, easy wedding with just the two of us in Vegas. We got married on November 17th, which is Troy's birthday. My birthday is November 18th. So our anniversary and both birthdays are one day apart. So it's a crazy time around the middle of November. So we will be married three years this November. The next question is, do you have any brothers or sisters? No, I am an only child. I remember growing up asking my mom and dad for siblings, but to be honest with you, I feel very fortunate to be an only child because I was given a lot of opportunities that maybe wouldn't have come my way if I had siblings. And also it has made me and my mom and dad very close. If you weren't aware, my dad actually passed away in 2013 of a massive heart attack when he was only 64. So all I have left as far as immediate family is my mom. So her and I are very, very close. You hear me talk about her in vlogs. She doesn't drive, so I pick her up and I take her to the grocery store and we just have a very close relationship. And I think that stems from me being an only child and me being able to really connect with her and my dad. Next question is, do you live near your family or do you live far away? And what is your very favorite family tradition? So my mom does live here in Spokane. Actually, when my dad passed away, I lived in Montana and decided to go ahead and move back to Spokane to be closer to my mom, to be able to spend more time with her as, again, she was the only immediate family that I had left. So she lives about 15 minutes away from me. And as far as family tradition goes, my favorite thing, of course, is the holidays. I love Thanksgiving and Christmas. Since we purchased the home we live in now, my mom comes here every year. She sold off all of her Christmas decorations and we host both things. Thanksgiving and Christmas and really any holidays over at our house. So I really like when she comes over, she brings her little dog Lucy and it's just my favorite part of Christmas and Thanksgiving is having my mom here as well as Troy's family. The next question is, do you plan on expanding your family, having children or more pets? So if it was up to me, I would have 10 dogs, but if it's up to Troy, we have two. I keep asking him to get a third dog and he keeps telling me no. So as far as pets go, I would love to expand our family, but I haven't convinced him yet. And as far as children go, no, we are not planning on having children. We are at an age and a place in our life where bringing children into it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for us. We have both been married before, like I mentioned, and chose in those relationships not to have children. So at this point, we're pretty content with Diesel and Lola and content with our freedom and flexibility that we have in our current life. The next question is how do you deal with the negative comments on YouTube from subscribers? So to be completely honest with you, I actually don't get a lot of negative comments from subscribers. The ones that I do receive, I don't even respond. I just go ahead and delete them. You cannot block people on YouTube. All you can do is prevent them from commenting. So that's what I will do. I will prevent them from commenting on future videos and I just move on with my life. So to be honest with you, it used to really, really bother me when I would get negative comments, but now I just let it roll off my back because I know that I am putting out great content for you guys, that I'm being honest, transparent, and upfront. I'm who I am, I'm unapologetically myself, and if they don't like that or they feel that they need to contribute to the negative 
activity around the world, then let them. I just simply remove the comment and disable them from being able to leave future comments. The next question is, what am I doing wrong that I can't even lose a tiny bit in a week? This is a hard question for me to answer because I don't know exactly what your situation is as far as what you're eating and your exercise. But I would say if you are struggling to lose even a little bit, whether you're following calories or points or both, you definitely need to take a double look at your tracker and make sure that you are tracking 100% honestly, that you are writing down everything that goes into your mouth, that you're not doing bites, licks, and tastes that you're not accounting for. You also need to take a look at what you're eating. Are you eating enough protein? Are you eating a balanced diet? You really just need to do some trial and error. Every body is different, so everybody is going to lose weight differently and based on different factors. The next question is, do I enjoy strength training? Yes, yes, and yes. That is what I love about going to Jazzercise. It is a well-rounded workout. There's stretching, cardio, and strength training. So I get basically an entire gym workout in an hour session. I really enjoy the strength training. I've noticed that not only has my strength increased as well as my endurance, but I'm starting to see muscles I didn't even know that I had appear in my legs and my arms. And that's just from the strength training that I'm getting from Jazzercise. I don't do any additional exercise other than an occasional walk here and there other than Jazzercise. So I enjoy strength training. It's very important to help shape and form your body throughout your weight loss journey. So I would recommend definitely incorporating some strength training as well as your cardio. Next is how old are your dogs? So Diesel will be nine in January, on January 21st. I can't even believe it, you guys, that he's almost nine years old. And Lola, we're not 100% sure how old she is because I adopted her from the pound, but I think she's about a year younger than Diesel. So I would say that she's approaching turning eight. Next is, are you able to get in the protein goal that Jordan Syatt suggests? To me, I'm struggling, it seems like a lot. So as I've mentioned in a couple of videos, the traditional protein goal from Jordan is your goal weight times one. So if your goal weight is 150 pounds, you would wanna eat about 150 grams of protein. Now, if you are struggling to get in that amount of protein, because that is a lot, you can take your goal weight times Point seven, which is going to lower your protein goal substantially, but still falls within what is recommended as your protein intake to help with keeping you full and satisfied as well as to help with weight loss. The next question is, why is the WW community on YouTube so clicky? So I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you guys. I think that it's human nature for people to bind together in groups for support. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a few other friends maybe on YouTube in the WW community that you talk with, that you use for support and guidance, and you use it to ask your questions and just become really good internet friends, essentially with other people in the WW community. However, I also feel that the double side of binding together as a group is it can become a little bit clicky. It can start to become a negative, place where you're sharing negative comments, where you're grouping together and targeting other YouTubers or individuals or situations. And I think that that can be a negative part of being in a click on YouTube in general. So for me, I just pretty much say to myself, there are just a couple of WW YouTubers that I talk with every so often or on a regular basis. But to be honest, I have YouTube for you guys. I don't have YouTube to make internet friends with other YouTubers. Yes, it's great to have friends everywhere, but for me, my focus is creating content for you guys and just establishing friendships with you. So I just don't get involved in the clickiness of the community. I have definitely, definitely been a regular target of the clicks in the WW community, but I just don't feed into it. I choose to be an adult and not feed into the drama. And I just continue doing what I'm doing and putting out content and being supportive and being your friend. Next question is, this isn't really juicy, but how tall are you and when will you be able to be on YouTube full time? Also, what do you choose to eat on your cheat or your treat day? So I am five foot eight, a little over five foot eight. As far as being full time on YouTube, I don't have an answer to that. It's whenever I am making enough money on YouTube to supplement a full-time income. So at this point, as I mentioned, I'm not there. The only way for me to get there is by you guys watching my videos, sharing my videos, liking, commenting, all of that really helps me get 
to be able to do YouTube full time. I would love that. I would love to be able to be even more heavily involved with you guys on YouTube. But for now, I continue doing what I'm doing in hopes that that will be a reality someday. And as far as my cheat or treat day, I don't really have a cheat or treat day anymore now that I am more calorie focused. I generally have a high calorie or high point day. And what I do is I allow myself basically a free meal or a high calorie or high point meal. It depends, sometimes it's something sweet, sometimes it's pizza, sometimes it's a burger, but I do allow myself one high calorie day per week and then that's the day that I just kind of eat what sounds good to me or maybe what I've been craving during the week. Next is how are you such an early bird and an early riser? I wish that I was like you. So. I am like a grandma and I say this all the time. I am in bed asleep between eight and maybe 8.30 every single night. And that has been this way most of my adult life. If you didn't know, I owned drive through coffee shops and coffee shops inside the YMCA's in my local town for about 12 years. So when you own a coffee shop, you are up early. You are open and serving coffee between five and 6 a.m. So for the majority of my adult life and even through college, I worked at a coffee shop, I have been up early. That is just the way it is for me. I'm in bed early and I'm up early and I love mornings. For me, mornings are the most peaceful time of the day. There's really nobody around, it's quiet. It. I can really just enjoy my cup of coffee. So I've always, always been a morning person. So for me, it just makes sense to go to bed early so I can get up early. Next is what led you into real estate and what did you do prior to that? So prior to real estate, I have always worked in human resources. I have been a human resource manager for years and years, which I really, really enjoyed. I have just always been an entrepreneur at heart. Like I mentioned, I owned my own business for 12 years. So I decided being unhappy in my last position, and I did share this in a video as well, a life update video. I will try to link that down below for you as well, where I kind of share why I left my last position in human resources. Being an entrepreneur, I've always just wanted to do my own thing. That's where YouTube came into play, and that's why I chose to do real estate. I love helping people find homes. I love going to open houses. I love just interacting with the public. So I decided that real estate, logical career for me, and I'm happy that I did that. I, like I said, I've really enjoyed it so far. The next question is, are you a lifelong dieter, or is this your first attempt? So I did kind of mention that I've had a weight issue most of my life, so I am pretty much a lifelong dieter. If you didn't know, back in about 2002 to 2005, I lost over 125 pounds on Weight Watchers. I was a diehard Weight Watcher. I did have a cheat day or a treat day once a week after I had lost the first 50 pounds. I was a workout fanatic. I really didn't eat a lot. Uh, it was back when you had to count everything, including fruit. I don't know what that program was called, maybe Momentum. But I did do Weight Watchers. I was very successful at it by restricting my calories, lost 125 pounds. Clearly didn't keep that off because once I got there, I decided that I could eat more, which is what happens quite often when we lose a lot of weight. And that's why I'm taking a different approach this time by eating a good amount of calories throughout my journey. Maybe not losing as much as quickly, but being able to maintain my weight loss once I actually get there so that I'm not continuing to be a lifelong dieter. Next question is, I think you've mentioned before that you are a grandma. So how many grandkids do you have? So. When I say grandma, I mean I go to bed early. <laughs> I don't actually have any children, as I mentioned, so I don't have any grandchildren. So that question I've actually gotten a few times. So when I say grandma, it's hypothetically as in I get up early and go to bed early. The next question is how old were you when you got your nose ring? So I actually got my nose pierced when I turned 40. I don't know if it was like a midlife crisis or if I just decided that I wanted it. I've actually kind of either wanted my belly button or my nose pierced for a very long time. So when I turned 40, I took the plunge and I did it and I love it. I don't have any other piercings other than my ears, but I truly love my nose ring. It's just kind of a way for me to express who I am and I like having the different jewelry and things that I can put into my nose. Next is how many tattoos do you have? So I actually have five. I have both of my ankles done here on my shoulder in the back, my forearm here, and also my arm on this side. So I actually have five tattoos. Next is how long have you been on WW and how much more weight do you want to lose? So I have been on WW this time 
this go around for about a year and a half and I've lost the 41 pounds. I wasn't as committed to my weight loss journey in 2019 as I have been in 2020. So I've seen the majority of that weight loss so far this year. And as far as how much more weight do I want to lose? I'm not sure. I don't really have a goal weight set in my mind. I kind of want to see how I feel and how my body feels as I continue to lose weight. I would say that I want to lose at least another 50 pounds, maybe more. We'll just, again, kind of see how I'm feeling and how my body's feeling as I continue to lose weight. Next is when did you adopt Diesel and Lola? Who did you have first and have they always gotten along? So actually I have had Diesel the longest. I did not adopt Diesel. I actually purchased him from a breeder. He is a full breed papered yellow lab when I lived in Montana. I lived in Missoula and I purchased Diesel from a breeder in Lolo, Montana when he was 12 weeks old. So I have had him since he was a puppy and believe it or not, he was the runt of the litter even though he's over 100 pounds now. I can't even imagine how big his brothers and sisters are. As far as Lola, when I lived in Idaho, I did adopt her from a local shelter. So Lola originally came from Los Angeles. She was in a kill shelter, which seriously breaks my heart. And they transferred her up to Hayden, Idaho, which is a non-kill shelter. And that is where she was adopted from. So I had Diesel for quite a while before I adopted Lola. And yes, they've always gotten along. Lola is the boss hands down she runs the show diesel is very i always say he's like dur, 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 dur. like he's just happy being him lola runs the show for sure she walked in the house the very first day we got her and basically laid down the law and that's been how it's been ever since but they truly are best friends lola follows him everywhere he licks her every night and comforts her they are truly our best friends they spend all their time together and I can't even imagine what will happen when one of them isn't here anymore because they really truly are so close. Next question is, are you super organized and clean and tidy? I see your grocery hauls and how you set yourself up for camping and your house is always clean. Are you this way and have you always been this way? Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so like OCD, organized, clean. I have been this way my entire life. I am a list maker to the core. My mom said even as a very, very young child, I would make lists and have those in my room. My mom is very clean and tidy and organized, so I grew up that way. Our house was always spotless. It's still spotless to this day. So I believe that because I grew up that way and that's all I knew, that that is kind of what was ingrained in me and I've carried that into adulthood. And I'm so blessed and fortunate that Troy is the same way. He is OCD clean as well. So not only do I keep our house and our space very clean and organized, so does he. The next question is, do you read any books? Do you prefer fiction or nonfiction? And do you have any recommendations? So to be honest, I don't read books. I never ever have been a book reader. I think it's just because I don't have a lot of time to read. And when I do have downtime, I'm more of like a TV watcher, I guess. So I don't have any recommendations and I've really truly never been much of a book reader. Next is what part of the weight loss journey is currently the most challenging for you? So right now in my current state of my weight loss journey, I would say just not seeing big losses every week has been a bit challenging. I've actually come to peace with that though knowing that I'm eating enough calories to lose weight, but also enough calories to not damage my metabolism. And I know that when I do lose the weight this time, even if it's slower than I'd like, that it's going to stay off. And that is comforting to me. So really right now in my weight loss or my healthy lifestyle journey, I don't really have a lot of challenges. I'm just plugging along, doing what I know is best for my body. Next is, do you have a cheat day? We kind of talked about this, not anymore. I just have a high calorie day, not just a day where I just eat whatever I want. I actually still track and am aware of the calories and the points that I'm eating on that day. The next question is, I'm on Weight Watchers and I just can't get on board with tracking. I just don't do it. I'm not interested. I don't meal prep. Have you always done these things and what are your tips to become better at these? So tracking your food is incredibly important. Now, if you don't want to track every single thing you eat, maybe start with tracking one meal per day to see where you're falling points or calories. And as far as meal prepping goes, you don't have to meal prep to the extent that maybe I do or that other people do, but maybe meal prep one meal per week and see if that helps you stay on track. 
start small, take baby steps. You don't have to go all in in really anything in your healthy journey. Just do baby steps and eventually it will become a habit for you. You will find what works for you and it'll be easier for you to maintain. Next is how would you describe your childhood and teen years? Like I mentioned, I was a good kid. I've been a good kid my whole life, which has also gone into my adulthood. I've never been in trouble like I mentioned. And I would say that overall I had a very wonderful childhood. I had both my parents. We took family vacations every single year. Being an only child, my mom and dad would allow me to even pick a friend to bring on vacation with us. They were very supportive and loving and nurturing. So I feel very blessed that I had a great childhood that also went into my teen years and I continue to have a great relationship with my mom. Next is what was your turning point? When did you decide that you had to lose weight and what did you do exactly when that happened? So my turning point this time around was gaining back most of the 125 pounds that I lost over 10 years ago, 15 years ago actually. And seeing that number just continue to creep up on the scale, I decided that I needed to go back to WW. I knew that it worked because it worked for me in the past and I just recommitted myself to the program. Next is, does your husband also follow WW and clean eating and what does he do for work? So no, he does not. My husband eats whatever he wants. He's always had a pretty high metabolism. He was very, very thin growing up. He's still at a healthy weight. So he does not follow WW. However, he eats what I make for dinner because he'll starve otherwise or he's on his own. And certainly we know men are not on their own. They will eat what we make so that they don't have to cook for themselves. So he actually eats most of the meals that I make for dinner. However, he eats whatever he wants for lunches and snacks and things throughout the day. What he does for work is he works for Dairy Gold, which is a local dairy, and he is the milkman. He delivers milk. Actually, funny story for you. When we went on that very first date that I mentioned back at the beginning of the video, we were talking about, you know, the typical, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? And at that time, I actually owned coffee shops. Shop. So that was my primary job, my primary source of income. I let him know, you know, that I owned coffee shops. He said, oh, that's really cool, but I don't really like coffee. And I was like, oh, that's okay. And then I'm thinking, who doesn't like coffee? And then I said, well, what do you do? And he says, well, I actually work for Dairy Gold. He's like, funny story, I'm kind of the milkman. I go, oh, I don't really like milk. So we were off to a great start right from the get-go. He hates coffee, I hate milk, but here we are five years later and we're still married and he doesn't drink coffee and I don't drink milk. Next is how do you feel when people comment on your weight loss? Does it make you feel uncomfortable? I really struggle when people comment on mine. So to be honest, I enjoy it. If someone says, hey, you're looking good, you've lost weight, it kind of solidifies and reassures me that I'm, that I'm actually losing weight. So we can have kind of a distorted view of ourselves, whether that be positive or negative. So when someone does give us a compliment and they're noticing the success we're having in weight loss or even toning up our body, I think that we should take that compliment and run. You never want to put down someone who gives you a compliment. You never want to dismiss a compliment. So learn to accept them, learn to appreciate them, and learn to know that they're true. People only say what they actually see. The next question was, how long were you single before you met your husband? And you guys make such a cute pair. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I was single for about a year before Troy and I met and Troy was single for about three years prior to us meeting. Now we were both married before, like I mentioned, so we needed obviously a little time to get back to ourselves, to kind of reconnect with our being before we decided to date again. So I feel like when we actually did meet, we were both in a really good place to start a relationship. And that's actually what we were, what we were looking for. And I feel like we did a good job of taking it a little slower than a lot of people do as far as living separately for about nine months and then really getting to know each other even on a higher level when we bought our first home together and then the second home, the home that we're in now. So the last question is probably the juiciest one of all. And that is what are the negative parts of being on YouTube and how do you deal with the jealousy from other creators on your success? So I would say that the worst part of being on YouTube, of course, is the negativity. Whenever we put ourselves out on the internet, of course, we're going to get some negative feedback. I have just never understood why people feel the need to be negative 
or to even announce their departure when they're leaving your channel, they're unsubscribing. This isn't the airport. You don't have to announce your departure, but that is where I struggle. And that's probably the worst part of YouTube is just the negativity. Now I know in my mind that of course I'm putting myself out in the world. So of course there's going to be people that maybe don't like me or don't like how I approach things or that are just negative Nellies in general. But I would say that that is really the worst part of being on YouTube. And as far as dealing with creators that are jealous of my success, you know what? Jealousy is very destructive. So I try not to engage in jealousy or even in comparison for that matter. So if there is another creator out there that uses their jealousy to me for my success on YouTube against me, then that's on them. And that's a very, very sad place to be in life. And I am just grateful that I am not in that position. And I hope that anybody who is jealous of me, that's another creator, spends a little bit more time maybe focusing on their own channel and creating content for their own channel to grow that rather than spending their time and energy being jealous of others. So that is it, my friends. Those are all the questions. That was a lot. So I hope that you got to know me a little bit better, got a little bit more juicy details and insight into my life. Thank you so much to everybody who said submitted questions. And again, thank you to Justin over at Justin's Journey for the inspiration for today's video. If you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd stick around, hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. I'd love to have you be part of my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up if you love these Q and A's. I can definitely do more of these in the future along with get ready with me or just answering the questions. I'd love to be able to share more in depth of my life with you guys. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Go ahead and comment down below if there's any other questions that you have for me. I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching. And if you made it to the end of today's video, because I'm imagining with all the questions, it's going to be a long one. Leave the gold star emoji down in the comments or just type the word gold star if you're on a desktop and you don't have emojis. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for your love and your support of my channel. It truly means the most to me and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.